Hello everyone and welcome to my 2019 Mermaid sketchbook tour and I say sketchbook because I did not actually do a sketchbook this year for Mermaid. If you watched my first video you know that the challenge I set for myself this year was to create a different mermaid each day using a different art medium. It was quite a challenge. I think at some point point during this month I thought I had bitten off more than I could chew, but I ended up successfully completing 28 mermaids. There were other things that came up during the month that actually prevented me from completing all 31. It wasn't the fact that I ran out of art mediums. I still had a list of art mediums to finish, but I ran out of days. So here's the 28 mermaids of Mermay. Hope you enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started. So for day one, my medium of choice was acrylic paint. And I decided to paint my sketchbook like I did last year, except for I didn't really do much sketching in it except for like ideas. That's all I did was sketch ideas in there. There are no finished illustrations in this sketchbook. But I decided to use acrylic paint to paint on this sketchbook because it is a canvas sketchbook. And of course, I have a video on this one if you want to see how I did that. For day two, I did digital art and I made this little mermaid right here. This little sticker. I ended up turning her into a sticker. This is just on a backing. But she's probably my favorite mermaid, I think, of all month. Because she's just so cute. She's a little manatee mermaid. I really like how she turned out. And for day three, I did colored pencil on black paper. This is something I haven't done in a while, so I had to kind of get back into it. And I don't know why it doesn't show up as bright a colors in person as it does on camera and in the photograph. It's so weird. I think it's because of the waxy coating of the um, colored pencil kind of like dulls the colors a little bit, but on camera it doesn't affect it. So that was day three. Day four I did graphite. I like the concept of this one. I don't know how I came up with this. It just like popped into my head and I was like, hmm, the dangers of having long hair under the water would probably be getting things tangled in it. And day four, day four, or no, day one, two, three, five, day five. I'm losing track already. Uh, day five, I did a stamp and this is actually just a, one of those big erasers that says for big mistakes. I just took one of those because I didn't have any stamp rubber and then I just took wood carving tools because I don't have stamp carving tools and I carved this and made a couple little stamped pieces. This one turned out the best and I used embossing powder to kind of make it all shiny and give it a raised texture to it. I was very happy with this. Um, only the second time? Yeah, second time ever making a stamp. And the first time was not successful. So I'm very happy with this. And for day six, I did a ballpoint pen sketch. And if you follow me on any of my social media or have seen any of my sketching videos, you know this is one of my preferred methods. This is my preferred method of sketching is using ballpoint pen. Just a cheap, uh, I think it's a Bic ballpoint pen. The blue one. I like the blue one. And for the highlights, I use just a Jelly Roll white gel pen. Alright, so day seven. This page is very messy because I had to do a lot of practice. A lot of um, kind of practice blending and all that stuff. I did chalk pastel, which it's not my favorite art medium, but I really like the concept and I'm pretty happy with the colors, so I'm happy with how it turned out, despite the fact that it is not my favorite art medium. 
I know a lot of people like it, and a lot of people can get really good results. I just need to be a little more patient with it, I think. But that was day seven. Now, on to day eight. Hold on. Where is it? Come back to me. Where did it go? I feel like it's hiding in plain sight. Oh, for day eight, I did a washi tape piece. It's kind of hard to get that in the camera shot because I think that's one of the bigger pieces that I did. This one was really fun to do. I really like it and I think I'm going to try to do more in the future because this was a very fun project to work on. Um, her tail was a little challenging because I can see through these washi tapes so I knew where to trim but I could not see through this tape so it was a lot harder to trim so I kind of had to guess at where <laughs> guess at where her tail was so but I like it I think it's fun I think you should try it out if you've never tried out washi tape before um, all essentially I did was put down a pen sketch and then decide what patterned washi tape I wanted where I put down the tape and then I trimmed it with an exacto knife that's all I did. It's pretty easy. Day nine, I made this little plushie. I think she turned out really cute. I'm not the best sewer in the world, but I'm very happy with how she turned out. I found this um, kind of mermaid scale fabric on clearance at Joann's, I think. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, it's May. I can totally do something with this for Mermaid. So and I also had this um, yarn that I kind of unraveled and kind of brushed out a little bit for her hair. And I've used this for hair on other plushies and other dolls that I've done in the past. So I knew this would work. Once I saw the colors in her tail, I was like, I've got the perfect thing for her hair. Day 10 and 11 was polymer clay and resin casting. I have a video of this if you want to check it out. Um, she is polymer clay and her little cat mermaid buddy sidekick is cast resin. For day 12, I have this origami mermaid. Now. I've done some origami in the past, and it was not that difficult. I had absolutely no idea how hard this was going to be. I was like, hmm, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to do something really simple and easy that doesn't require a lot of drawing, a lot of skill. I was wrong. It requires a lot of skill. This took me about an hour and a half to do. There were so many folds, and so much that I could not get to stay where it should stay. Ugh, like her waist was really hard to get to crimp in and stay. But I do really like her tail. I like how she turned out. Day 13 was this gouache illustration on hot pressed watercolor paper. And I really love the colors on this one. I was kind of inspired by the um, the t-shirt illustration I did of Stuart in the teacup with his little ship that he's playing with, kind of like his little bathtub. So I did a similar thing with the mermaid. Yes, I know she has to be a micro mermaid or a giant teacup, but I still like it. I really love the colors and I'm like really obsessed with how the little steam turned out. Day 14. Now well, this one's digital. Hold on. Day 14 was this comic right here. I'm very happy with this. This is probably my second favorite project of Mermaid was this comic right here. He's just chillaxing in the water and a dark form is swimming towards him. And they deposit a little 
baby otter and mama otter's like mm, he looks trustworthy enough i can leave my baby with him for a while <laughs> to babysit while i go off and hunt some fish was this watercolor and gouache poster color it was a bunch of different water-based paints on a sand dollar and i really like this one as well got a little bit chipped since i painted it which is sad but uh, i'm gonna put this in a frame so it doesn't get damaged any further day 15 was this poster color painting on wood i'm really happy with this one as well i love the colors in her tail and I never tried poster color paints on wood before, but I was very impressed with how opaque they turned out. I mean, just look, you can get some really bright colors in that tail. And I kind of wanted like this faded watercolory effect around the outside, which turned out great. So I'm happy with this one. Day 16. I did a video of this one as well, and the video was a little late to go up, but uh, I didn't have internet connection when I made the video, so it had to wait till I got home. But I had really a fun time with this project. Um, and I know a lot of people commented and said this was one of their favorites as well. She got a little sandy because I tried to do a photo shoot of her on the beach after, and uh, it was quite windy, and the sand was all over this piece and I'm like oh no we're just gonna go with what we got no photo shoot <laughs> this one's actually really heavy this is probably the heaviest no I take it back it's not the heaviest piece I did uh, that's coming up towards the end but it's one of the heaviest pieces that I did it's surprising how heavy shells are day 18 is another digital piece day 18 was this illustration over a photograph which Kind of combines digital illustration and photography since I took the photograph and I drew the mermaid. I really like this mermaid. I like the opalescent tail. Um, I kind of did her in a hurry so I'm really impressed with how well she came out. Um, but I actually, I'm going to scroll in here. Maybe you can see it. Maybe it'll pick up on camera. I don't know if you can see. But she has this scale texture on her tail and I actually made this brush. I'll show you. This is the brush that I made and I made a custom brush in Procreate gave her a little scale texture on her tail. And I love the colors. I kinda try, try to tie in her tail and like her whole color scheme with the background and I think it worked out really well. Day 19 I did jewelry making, which I made these three mermaids all sitting on pearls and uh, I think it's a pumice stone. You can see. But it looks like a little mini planet. But I decided since I was going the easy route, I would make three. So I didn't make, I didn't cast these metal pieces. I already had them. I bought them a while back and they were too small for the project that I bought them for but they ended up coming in quite handy to make little cute necklaces. Now here's where I kind of went off the grid a couple days and then I try my best to catch up and I think I'm still a few mermaids short but uh, hey I had a big show and I still had stuff to finish for it so it couldn't be helped. This next I did all in the same day and I'll just go through those. I did alcohol ink on glass which I didn't know how this was going to turn out this is kind of an experiment and I'm happy with how it turned out I think I might actually um, coat this with resin and give it a nice dome I think that will actually look really good kind of add a 3d effect to it even more I did porcelain paint I actually bought some porcelain paints for this and I added a little bit of glitter in with it. I was like, I don't know how that's going to turn out. But it actually stuck, which I'm happy about. And the porcelain paint took a little getting used to. Because it, it's a little more transparent than I thought it was going to be. So I had to add like a couple coats. So I did that. And then I also did a illustration with markers and with pen and ink. 
This one's pretty simple, but I actually really like the concept. All the little fishies swimming around her. I really like that one. And this one's kind of funny. I was happy with this one. And I also love the colors. So let's see. That was... Which one was that one? That was 20, 21, 22, and 23, I think? Hold on. Let me go back and count. Yeah, so 20, 21, 22, 23. And so for 24, I have this paper cutout illustration. And I love doing these. I've done a couple in the past, and I've done some, like, pop-up cards for friends and family, and I really love doing them. Oh, no. Hold on. <laughs> that goes there. Obviously, my glue didn't hold that. Anyways, <laughs> I really like doing these. They're very fun. Um, I essentially just took an X-Acto knife and cut out the pieces and then glued them together. The gluing was definitely the hardest part that took the longest because I always get glue all over my fingers and then the paper starts sticking to me and then I have to get up and wash my hands and uh, it just takes a while. But uh, cutting the stuff out did not take long at all. I actually really, it's very therapeutic to cut paper in my opinion. Maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> For 25, day 25, or mermaid number 25, it wasn't day 25. Uh, for mermaid number 25, we have watercolor. And I'm very happy with this one. Um, I had this concept like the first, within the first couple days of mermaid. So I sketched it in my sketchbook and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this. But I don't know if I want to do this in charcoal because of the penguins and the whole black and white color scheme they've got going on. Or if I want to do it with watercolor, because I kind of wanted to bring in those blues from the ice. Uh, I really like the colors of this one. I'm glad I decided to go with watercolor. I played around with a lot of different textures, and I'm very happy that I did and chose to not do it in charcoal. Charcoal would have been fine, but I'm very pleased with the colors that I got from this. And my favorite part, which is really weird, but my favorite part of this painting is the little bubble trails from the penguins. That's my favorite part. So for 26 and 27, we have this decadent mermaid box. It opens. And I've made a video in the past um, where I did a recipe box that looked like a cake. And I wanted to do something similar. I kind of didn't know how I wanted to put it together, but I was at the craft store and I saw molds for um, the mermaid tail and the starfish. And I'm like, hmm, I could totally have a mermaid's tail just like coming up out of the box. And this looks like the sea foam. I'm, yes, it worked out perfectly. And I'm happy, 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 happy with it. Oh, and this is also um, glitter. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's glitter hot glue which I was so happy to find at the dollar store, surprisingly. So there's that one, and let's see what I say, 26, 27. I made a mermaid crown, did a lot of hot gluing, and a lot of burning my fingers, because that's what you do with a hot glue gun, or at least what I do with hot glue gun. It's very simple style, like I didn't paint the shells or anything, I added some glitter along the bottom, but uh, I'm, yeah, it looks very regal and very pretty. And I love the pearls, the little centerpiece. I like it. It's a little tight on my head. I should have actually sized this a little bit better and tried it on as I made it, but I can get it on and off my head, so that's what counts. Even if it is a little uncomfortable. Beauty is pain, so they say. And for mermaid number 28. Yes, I had to end at 28. I ran out of days and ran out of time. I made an animation. So we have this little sleepy mermaid. Sleepy seal mermaid that gets interrupted by a wave. Also have a GIF version which just goes on and on and on forever. So she constantly gets her sleep interrupted. 
I'm happy with this. Um, it was definitely one of my more simple animations. It's only got 40 something frames in it. Hold on, let me check. We're gonna check this. There we go. We have, ha ha ha. So it has 54 frames, which is actually pretty short for an animation. <laughs> um, a lot of them are repeated frames, like the breathing is a repeated frame and uh, her opening and closing her eyes, those are repeated frames. And that's actually my favorite part, is her blinking. The little blink is just so cute. <laughs> but yes, I like, I love animation. I love doing animation, even if it's frustrating, because Procreate decided to change... <sighs> to change how it operated. <laughs> so I had to learn how to make it animate all over again, because now they have an animation feature. Which is kind of counterintuitive, but I can do a video on that. <laughs> I can do a completely separate video on that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my little rambling, strange mermaid a sketchbook tour. And even though I did not get to 31 mermaids, I got awfully close. And considering that I set such a big task for myself to do a different art medium every day and that uh, I had a big show and I went out of town for a whole week. I think I did pretty well. <laughs> what do y'all think? Um, I'm definitely looking forward to next year. Next year I'm probably going to actually follow the prompts because I've never followed prompts before. So that will be fun. I'll probably add a little extra something to it as I always do. But um, yeah, I think this is the last art challenge I'm going to do until October, which I will do Inktober, as I always do. So stay tuned and subscribe for weekly videos or semi-weekly videos, depending on, on how busy the month is. Subscribe to my other social media, links in the description below if you want to see daily uploads or to see kind of what I'm up to on the day-to-day -day basis. And I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.